not going to tell us if you're playing with it, so I'll just ask, how are you feeling physically with the knee? I feel good. Are you playing week one? I'm not going to set any uh, dates or expectations. I think uh, it's going to be a fun ride, and we'll kind of all figure it out. Emotionally, what's the ride been of rehab? You know, are you feeling ups and downs? How do you feel being back around football? Uh, I mean, yeah, I really, really like football. Um, it's almost like when you take something away, you don't realize how much you enjoy it. I mean, it is a grind. Um, but being away, I'm like really getting itching to get back out there. Um, I don't like seeing other people do my job. Uh, but I mean, it's all part of the course I have to play. I kind of have to go down, like I said, when it happened. I know there's this road I have to go down, and it's a long road, and I don't like it. But the only way to get to where I want to be is I got to go down that road. So I'm currently down it right now. So we'll see where when it ends. How many hours? How many hours a day is it to do this this spring and summer versus you know not overdoing it the rest of the recovery? I think there's a fine line. That's kind of what I figured out. I haven't really had any big injuries. Like, this is definitely my biggest injury. Um, it really kind of depends. There's certain days where you can't really do too much. You, I, and you're kind of figuring out. I think the best rehab is the, the one that's adjust constantly on the fly. So how much your body can tolerate. Because you want to basically toe the line without crossing it. Because once you do, then you kind of set yourself back, and you don't want to be in that position. So. I think we've done a great job here and with the people I was working with back out in California. We've done a good job and uh, I've been pleased. I mean, I guess this is something that you guys, I can tell you guys is I haven't had any hiccups, so that's nice. So I'm just kind of staying the course. Is, is some of the fun stuff like the... Wait, wait, hold on. What, which one? Sorry. Let's start with the... Are you, Wes, are you okay with letting... Oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I apologize for Wes. Thank you very much. Uh, what kind of things are you doing on the sideline right now, I guess, when you can't like physically be out on the field? Are you kind of trying to serve as a mentor for some of the younger guys or trying to kind of take on like that leadership role from the sidelines? Yeah, I think uh, I've always tried to give everyone as much knowledge as I can. I think this is really testing me on my ability to articulate myself because I am a more of a visual learner and I like to show people. So when I really can't show anyone what to do, trying to articulate how to move your body or in a certain way um, has been a learning and growing experience. Um, but something that uh, I would want if someone was in my shoes, so that's kind of how I've been trying to approach this situation, this mentorship that I'm in. Um, and then beyond that, I mean, while I'm, it's also kind of tough because I got to, you know, my knee I got to take care of. So I, I mean, I only pop out for the last 10 minutes. I'm in the Hudson Center just, you know, um, sipping a martini, you know, relaxing for the first hour and a half, and then I come out, pour some water on me, and then look like I did something. Is some of the is some of the fun stuff, Dave, the jersey swap, the golf cart. I mean, does it does it just kind of help get through the mental grind of, of the rehab to be distracted, maybe here and there? I mean, I'd probably do that if I didn't do if I didn't hurt my knee. I just, I mean, I think we need to have fun a little bit. I mean, this is a game at the end of the day, and. Locker room with a bunch of, I guess, I'd like to think friends. Certain people don't consider everyone to be a, close to them. But for me, I, uh, I appreciate a lot of people. And I have friends in there. And I'm comfortable with where I, where I stand. And that's what makes me feel good at the end of the day. If I had to, uh, uh, if I had to take where other people called where I was, um, I, I'd probably keep me up at night. But I'm kind of comfortable with myself. So that makes me feel good where I stand. The golf cart was a learning experience for me because I looked up Vanquish was the car they stopped making in 2018. So where did this thing come from? Um, Pat McAfee, shout out Pat McAfee. Um, he, him and Aaron pretty much bullied me into getting him a car because I apparently don't give him any gifts. So he wanted a Ashton Martin Vanquish, so I got him an Ashton Martin Vanquish. Vanquish, my way. Dave, uh, totally get not putting a deadline on your recovery, but maybe more of a range. You're on PUP right now. Is it a goal of yours to not enter the season on PUP? I mean, is that something in your mind, or is that kind of a foregone conclusion to you? I think we'll address that fork in the road once we get there. I think right now it's, for me, I wake up every morning, I get in here, kind of the crack of dawn, make sure I attack everything from the rest and recovery to the rehab to uh, the – strength and condition side and kind of see where I'm at. And then when that fork in the road hits, we'll see where I'm at physically. 
and that's going to kind of dictate where I'm going to be. And you know, we've had a lot of communication and open communication between Flea, Nate, the guys in the athletic training room, all the way up to uh, Russ, Matt. So we're in constant communication, um, and I think we feel comfortable with being able to address that situation when it open, when it comes up. Dave, I've heard with other guys who've had injuries like that that Pat has a day where you know he, he thinks it's got to be you got to go to that day before you're safe. Or you're, you I got to do what? You have to go a certain amount of time before he's like really comfortable mm -hmm. with letting you play. Is that the deadline, or is it really do you show something in terms of strength, flexion, whatever it is? Is that what determines it? I think it's a two-part two question. I think uh, none of us are doctors in here, so let's just preface that. But from what I know, trying to listen, uh, physically, from a strength standpoint, I need to, you have atrophy to your leg with the inability on, on the moment of surgery of turning on the certain muscles after a long time, you lose a lot of muscle mass. The atrophy to the calf, to the hamstring, to all the other, um, you know, there's four quads. That's why they call it a quadriceps. So atrophy to all four of those muscles that you need to rebuild. So uh, that all that's to do with stability of the knee. And then beyond that, you have the graft. The graft needs to take and get blood flow and strengthen. And it goes through a kind of a bell curve of a lifespan. And that's where you get your date of where people feel comfortable, doctors do. And I think there's a fine line between the two. The only way we know exactly where the graft is is if I get cut open and they can go look and see where I am. Now, again, where does that put me? So uh, from what I know is I think we're going to have open communication the entire way, see how I feel. And once we all feel comfortable of where I'm at and when I can go out there and play not just football, but the brand of football that I know and everyone else does, I think that's where we'll be in a good spot. Hey, Dave, the uh, jersey swap with Kelly, was that an in-the-moment thing, or were you kind of thinking of doing something like that when he got in the building? <laughs> uh, yeah, I kind of just took his jersey and then just put mine in his locker. Um, yeah, I mean, I've just been – I mean, I've never met him before. I've only just been tagged and stuff, saying that he's like my doppelganger, and uh, I think it's hilarious. He's told me stories of him being down in Chicago and – Guys are being adamant that that's me. He's like, guys, I'm not David. Like, leave me alone. <laughs> and I'm sitting there, I'm like, it'd be kind of nice to be like 6'9". That'd be pretty cool. Uh, but I think it was awesome to meet him. And then it, it's cool to having a, a veteran that's been around for a while kind of share stories, experiences, guys that we can relate to that we've um, played against. So I think he's a great addition to the room. Uh, he's awesome. I, uh, I feel like I'm looking in a mirror, so that's kind of fun. Um, not, not narcissistic of me, so... That's also something that's an added bonus. Uh, no, but he's been great. He's, he's the addition in the room. I think they do a really good job of plugging guys in that room, and we have a lot of fun. Um, but the jersey thing was really just, uh, yeah, I just kind of went with it. Does Elton come to you to have any conversations about, you know, with, with what he's trying to do now, or is he kind of just doing this on his own? Or, or? No, Elton has everything figured out. Now he, I mean, uh, I really – have a lot of respect for Elton. Um, I think he's a great player. Uh, I think he has even more to give, more than I think he even knows. And I've told him this, and I'll tell you guys it. My goal is to make sure he can get, he can become the best Elton Jenkins he can be. Um, and I think it kind of shows his versatility, and not only that, but the level of play he can do along the line is something very unique and special. Uh, and he's a, uh, he's a special player. And I think the more that he continues to be the best Elton he can be, um, it could be something uh, special. So every day I just kind of add little tidbits. We have conversations. He'll ask me. Um, I'll even just kind of interject, knowing how our you know, relationship has been. Because even at guard, I kind of just kind of tell him certain things I knew to help speed him up so he doesn't have to wait the six weeks till you experience it. Like, yo, you're probably going to experience this, so I want you to attack it. Giving him ideas now how to tackle. It's nice because um, when there is an issue, I'm like, see, this is why I don't like you when you do this. So this is a little, you know, taste of your own medicine. So now when you, if we do ever get back to where I'm at tackle and you're at guard, if that's what the future is, now you, maybe you can help me out a little bit. But uh, it, it's been great. I mean, he's, he's an awesome player, um, great person in the offensive line room, great person in the locker room. Um, 
And I think one thing that kind of goes unnoticed with him is also his, his attitude. Uh, he's, he's a dog, straight up. Dave, you know guys around the league pretty well at the left tackle position. If Elton was playing on another team that didn't have a first team all pro at left tackle and that was his position, where, where would he, where would he stack up in, in the league as a left tackle? Um, I got to see more of him play, to be honest. Um, I think that's fairness of Elton and that's fairness for the other guys in the league. But uh, like I said, I think he's a really good player. I think he um, does an exceptional job being able to rotate at different positions and not only adjust his feet, but the type of game you have to play based on position um, is something that's very unique in that he can do and do it at a, at a high level, which is very uh, uncommon. I mean, stuff like you've heard even Brian say, even just switching from left to right tackle, it's like eating with your left hand if you're right-handed, um, riding with your left hand. Things are, everything's flipped, everything's backwards, even your body mechanically. Certain muscles get, get developed. So I think something unique, uh, something I, I don't think that that's fair to answer right now. But um, maybe, I don't know, if it does happen, maybe he's playing a left tackle, you can come ask me that then and I'll have a better idea. Uh, let me ask you th this way. How, how, you know, we, we talked about how every lineman at this level is good, but there's so few guards that can just kick out the left tackle and not be a problem. How, how rare is that? And, and what does it take for a guard to be able to do that? Um, definitely not very common. I think there's only a handful of guys that can do that. And I think he's part of that handful. And then um, what it takes for him, one, being a football player and understanding the game. Two, I think his length. You okay, Sarah? Uh, to his arm length um, gives him an advantage. But I think the most important thing, which I firmly believe in, is your feet. Your feet win the block. Your hands complement. He's got really good feet, very quick feet. So, um, and that's something that we've even talked about for him. You know, timing up snap counts and cadences have been huge. It's helped him have success out on the edge, and then also just, you know, utilizing that feet. But just know that hey, you're going to have to move him a little bit more, a little bit further. Um, but once you get to the spot, you can kind of turn it into guard, and then you can be successful. So I think that's what's helped him um, do such a good job so early on. We're going to take a few more in the room, and then we're going to take some from Zoom. Dave, Dave, last year, what was your takeaway from playing in empty stadiums, and how do you think it changed the game, either for linemen or the whole team or competitive advantage and all that? Uh, it was awesome. Uh, I think it uh, – I don't think fans really realize – um, how, what crowd noise can do. Okay. And the secret is, to all the Pack fans out there, crowd noise affects offensive linemen the most. So when an opposing team comes in, not just third down, if you do it on first and second down as well, be as loud as possible, you're putting that offensive line in a stressful and uncomfortable position. Because, like I said, when I'm talking about playing left tackle for Elton, the get off is very important. And if you are a little bit further behind, you give the defensive uh, the edge rusher or outside linebacker, DN, a better jump on the ball. That puts you at a, at a significant disadvantage of winning that block. So it was very nice last year. Um, a lot, you know, going into those uh, certain dome stadiums that are very loud, it, it made my life a lot easier. I got to look at the actual defense instead of staring at the inside. Mm -hmm. Dave, will, will you only come back if you're 100%? I mean, your 90% is probably better than most people's 100% in the league. Um, is there any part of you, if week one comes and you're at like 90, 95%, will you wait? Or are you only comfortable coming back fully healthy, whatever that means to you? I think safety is the most important thing. Um, uh, I don't think anyone in the training room, I don't think Doc would ever let me go out there if it was a safety issue and even myself. So to answer your question, if my safety is above my 90, 95 that you say, I'm good with it. If my, if I'm at 100% playing, but I'm at a 60% safety, that's an issue. Dave, uh, yesterday, Billy Turner said that there's this standard that you guys have in your offensive line room now, and that when young guys come in, they learn what that standard is. When you, you came in, was there a similar standard, and have you, did you learn anything on how, uh, how you communicate what that standard is in a, in a you know, useful way to these young guys? Yeah, uh, man, I mean, the standard has evolved. I wouldn't even say changed. 
based on certain things we've had to do with different, even different offenses. But uh, we're about our business. That's the most important thing. I love having fun. I will continue to have fun as long as I'm taking care of my business. The moment that my business is being taken care of, my fun goes out the window. That's what I learned early on, and that's what we're teaching these guys. We're going to joke around. We're going to have fun. If you don't know your play, if you mess up on your assignment, if you have a bad game and you're out trying to joke around, no. There is a zero tolerance, and I'm just going to full on say there's zero in our room when it comes to that standard. Now, what I've experienced, if you're playing really good and you are doing everything you're told, your leash gets a little bit longer, you can have more fun. Um, that's what I experienced with Brian, Josh, and TJ, who were my veterans, Marshall, um, Evan Dietrich Smith, when I got in the room. Um, and beyond all that, there was a certain initiation process, and I think that's what brings our room really close. And there's an expectation and standard on top of all that. It kind of groups it in that um, I think that's what makes most offense line rooms around the NFL special but particularly in that room, and that's what we're trying to make sure carries on as long as I'm here and when I'm not. David, going back to... We got to go to Zoom after this. Going back to Elton just real quick. Uh, you established you're not a narcissist, but you are as good as it gets at left tackle in this league. Could you do what he does? As good as you are at what you do, do you think you could do what he does? At guard, yeah. At center, I just need more time. <laughs> he, he, he got the jump on me early. I was too athletic and too good that they didn't ever put me inside. Um, but even I, I, I never snapped a ball realistically until I got uh, in the NFL. I remember it was 2014, and I remember going to CQ, and my coaches were yelling at me. This is like halfway through the year. And I took my first snap um, under center. I thought it was a joke. They get up in there. I, I was not prepared for that. <laughs> I like jumped out like, guys, stop messing with me. Like, come on. And that was, I'm happy to be attacked when I'm glad I'm out there. I'm good. <laughs> All right, Sarah, we will uh, take uh, three from Zoom, please. All right, uh, Steve McCarty. Just wondering what your impressions are so far of Josh Myers and how he's kind of handling the responsibility being thrown at him as we go to the next part. Um, I think he's attacking it the right way. Uh, I think he's got the good makeup. He's a, he's a big man. I, I remember early on when he first walked in, I was like, what's your deal? You're either a terrible athlete or a bad football player because why are you playing center being six foot five? Uh, and he kind of proved me wrong on both. Uh, he, I, I, think he, I think he's got a, a good makeup to be a good football player for a long time. Um, I want to see what he can do, how he responds to adversity. I think that's really important. But uh, I, he's approached it, approached it the right way. Um, he's really taken on the playbook. Uh, he's, you know, gone out of his way to ask veterans questions, making sure he's doing everything the right way, not only on the football field but off the football field. And I think that's uh, setting yourself up for success. So, though I will not say he's my favorite center from Ohio State, um, he's off to a good start. Lily Zhao. Hey, David. Now that Randall's back. A, how happy are you that he is back on the team? And what more can you add to an already very explosive offense this fall? Uh, I mean, enough, there's not enough words or time that can express what Randall means in the locker room and as a player. Uh, I mean, I have in my locker a photo of him my rookie year. Uh, he was very friendly right off the bat. He's a consummate pro. He does everything the right way um, from the approach, everything off the field to preparation before practice, to knowing his playbook, to being on time, um, to even what it means to be a father, to be a husband, to be a man. And there isn't an amount of money that, can, that you can put a price tag on what he can teach people, whether you want to listen to him or you happen to have, you know, he happens to pull you aside. Uh, talking about his football ability, his IQs off the charts, his chemistry with our quarterback, obviously, as we've all been, uh, we've all experienced, is something that uh, is a recipe for success. And I think what he brings in that offense, uh, or sorry, what he brings in the wide receiver room, um, as well as what he's going to do in slot, I think is going to be very beneficial to us and add an extra weapon that um, can really help us out, um, not only in the regular season, but I think down the stretch. And last one, Stephen Watson. Hey, David. Uh, thanks for the fun one. Uh, I saw you driving back from practice with Aaron in this golf cart. First of all, how does it drive? And 
how much pride do you take in the gift that you not only gave, but how your quarterback has received that game? Um, well, I'm not an Indian giver, so I'll just preface that. Uh, the thing is fast. I am surprised that it, it actually has a lot of pickup. And then uh, I'm just excited now for the – I just kind of set a standard. I've been giving him ideas of certain kind of yachts that are my favorite for Christmas <laughs> um, that I've been picking out that I've seen in the Bahamas in Florida. Um, so, yeah, I, I mean, at this point he's only – you know, it's only going to disappoint me if I don't have a yacht come Christmas. I'm not even asking for to pay, you know, like I'll, I'll pay the, you know, the cleaning fee, the storage, all that. I just, you know, the, the down payment on it is really is what's important. And the color, um, the trim, seams, engine, um, you know, how the, the starboard of the, and the stern of the ship. That's just, that was a, just a couple of few things. But yeah.